In this section, we're going to talk about setting up the laser and how it operates. We'll go through all the different functions, including the safety devices, and also show how easy it is to operate. So let's start going through that. As you can see, there's just a power source that plugs into the back of the laser. We have an on-off switch in the back of the laser. We have a safety key. It turns on and off the laser. And you'll notice there's also a laser stop. A laser stop is also another safety device that if it's hit, it shuts the laser down immediately. You probably never will have any time or use for that, but it is a precautionary device placed on all lasers. As we go through how the laser works, you'll see it's very nicely lit up. Our power is measured in watts, and we can adjust that power up or down with just a touch of a button. We have two modes when we utilize the precise LTM. We have a pulsed and a continuous mode. Again, by just hitting the pulse or mode button. By extending or retracting our fiber, that will allow us to have our fiber come out and deliver the energy. If we extend, as you can see, the fiber is just delivered, and it's delivered as much as we need. At the end of the procedure, or at the end of the day, we'd hit the retract, and that would pull it automatically back into place. Now, other functions of the laser would include the aiming beam. By again touching on it, we can adjust the aiming beam from nominal to very bright. If we're doing a surgical procedure, we might want to keep that aiming beam at a very low level. But if we're doing a periodontal procedure and we want that aiming beam to show through the gingival tissue, we might want to increase it. As we start to use the laser, we'll also see that there is a programmability function. We have four programmed keys. All we have to do is up or decrease the power and that will be saved in that program. As you can see we're at 0.5 watt. Let's change that to 0.1 or 1.0 watts. That would be program 4. Okay? If we go through the program again, you can see 1 watt will appear again because we have saved that. Very very simple use, easy way to incorporate a few program settings into your laser. Now when we get into how the laser interacts with tissue, I would rather you just understand the difference between power and settings and what effect it has on tissue rather than go to presets. Some lasers have 10, 15, 20 different presets. To me it's just a waste of time. What you need is to know how the laser interacts with tissue. But we can go through that and we'll have settings later on for you to see the different procedures and what's a starting point to get the result you want. As you can see, another nice feature of the laser is once we hit the ready, you'll see now the laser is on. You also see the aiming beam coming out of the end of the fiber. And like I said earlier, we can adjust that aiming beam. Your aiming beam is just a laser pointer. And we adjust that according to how much light and how we can perceive that energy being directed to the targeted tissue. Once we're in the ready mode, we're ready to utilize the laser. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to hit that back. We'd go back to a standby mode. We're going to extend the fiber, and we're going to now place the fiber through the handpiece. See, the back of the handpiece will unscrew. The fiber can be threaded up through the handpiece. We can also place a tip. The tips that come with the laser are either pre-curved or straight, and that will just depend on the procedure. We're going to extend the fiber out the end of the tip, then we're going to just screw the back of the handpiece down, and that will tighten it and hold the fiber in place. 
We'll get into cleaving and how much fiber needs to be exposed when we get into the actual operation of the laser and showing you how to cut. But now the laser is ready to go. Hit the ready button again, you can see the aiming beam. If we now pressed onto the foot pedal, the laser would start to fire. This is just a very, very unique feature of this laser. There's no wire, there's no activating of this foot pedal. The only thing you need to do is press it down. You see the red star on the laser, on the screen. That's showing that the laser is actually firing. So now the laser's on. You're not going to lose the communication between the laser and the foot pedal like you might with other Bluetooth operated devices. Just very, very simplistic use. The foot pedal also has a battery. It's a 9 volt lithium battery, which should last about 100 hours. And that's easily changed by just unscrewing the cap and replacing that battery. So as you can see, the features of the laser are very, make it very simple to use and very efficient. When you're not utilizing the handpiece, there's a magnetic handpiece holder in the front that holds it perfectly in place until you're ready to use it. As you start to use your laser more and more, you'll see that there are variations in how much power or wattage can be delivered. Wattage is just energy per amount of time. One watt is one amount of energy or one jewel of energy, one packet of energy per second. Five watts would be five packets or five joules of energy per second. Obviously five watts would be stronger and more powerful than one watt. All we can have to do is walk that power up and as you can see this will go all the way up to five watts. The capability of the precise LTM is five watts. I really don't see any need for any more power than that. <clears throat> you can also, that would be five watts and that would be in a continuous mode. We can also use it in a pulsed mode. If we use it in a pulsed mode, our maximum power would be five watts divided by 50% because your duty cycle or your time on and time off is 50-50. Now what do I mean by that? If you're in a pulse mode at 50% or 50-50 duty cycle, the laser would be on, off, on, off, on 50% of the time, off 50% of the time. Which if it, we had a power of 5 watts and it was on 50% of the time would give us an average power of 2.5 watts. Similarly, if we bump down to 4 watts and we we're on a 50, 50 duty cycle, our average power would be half of 4 watts or 2 watts. And as we learn to adjust the power, you'll find that most of your cutting is going to be done between 0.8 and maybe, maybe the upper limit, 2 watts. This is an 810 nanometer laser. The 810 is a very powerful cutting, creates good hemostasis, and leaves very, very little tissue charring. It has all the advantages that you want to be using day in, day out. Another nice feature of the Precise LTM is the ability to extend the fiber as needed to get into the patient's mouth to target your tissue. And then when you're done, by just hitting the retract to store the fiber. There's no messy fiber spinning out of control. The fiber is a quartz silicate fiber. It comes in a 20 foot length. That 20 foot length, depending on how often you use it, should last you days, months, I would say three to six months with continuous use. Because every time you do use the laser, you do have to cleave a little bit of the end off, which we'll talk about when we talk about laser tissue interaction, initiation of tips, and also cleaning of the tips. Now, when we do extend the fiber back and forth and utilize it, and now we've used it and it's become short to the point we can't use it, it's easily replaced. So very simple, long-lasting fiber. I would say you'll get good three to six months of use out of it if, that's, if you're using it to its full potential. When I mean using it to its full potential, I want you using this four, five, six, 
eight times a day. Every patient can benefit from using your laser. And the more you think about how this is going to help you day in and day out, the more you're going to see the value of this laser and how it helps you provide better dentistry.